I think sometimes people can not only misunderstand statistics or read them incorrectly, like you can have people who are using statistics to try and doctor a specific viewpoint or impression by people. Sure. People can be purposely using a statistics to mislead people to believe a certain thing. Like you can find a statistic to quote unquote prove anything. Yeah, I mean, you can doctor things in certain ways so that it sounds radically different. Right. 98% survival rate versus 2% death rate. Right. These ring, I mean, that's... at least on, like, I think if you are more mathematically minded, you translate them and it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But they, the at least the initial impact is radically different between the yeah. two. Well, there's a lot, like, in my mind... Whenever I hear statistics, like, my mind immediately goes to, like, I want to understand everything that went into how they got that statistic so that I understand exactly how maybe accurate or reliable it is. Sure. Because there are so many ways that statistics can be incomplete nefariously or based on um, maybe just lack of thoroughness in your study. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I I feel like... So, I was... I don't know if this is going a different direction than what you were... No, it's interesting. So I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm addressing the individualized case, like one person, right? Yeah. And you're addressing the like kind of mid-tier case where we're not talking about all of the population. We're talking about... and So we're not talking about all the population and we're not talking about an individual. We're talking about some group. So in the example earlier, maybe we're talking about like, like in the prostate cancer example, right? It's not helpful to say 6% of the population is going to get prostate cancer at some point in their lifetime. It mm-hmm. is helpful to say 13% of the male population will get prostate cancer in their lifetime. And I kind of brought that up as an individualized case in the event that someone was a woman, but you're saying so you want to understand other underlying variables to be able to apply it to smaller groups. Maybe what I'm saying is I hear that statistic and my mind goes, how was that gathered? And what sure. went into that statistic? Because was a sample I, group, 10 because, people or... Be, well, or, you know, are people factored into that? Um, is that all living males? Like, where are we talking about? Are we talking about in the US? Or are we talking about in the world, first of all? Yeah. Is it... Did they pull that from all living males? So any male... Say it's a US study. Any male in the US study who was ever alive, had a social security number or whatever they count as one person in that study? Or are you factoring out maybe people who died before the age of 20? Sure. Because you could say, you know, men who make it to the age of 20, like that's a different statistic. The likelihood's going to go up then. I mean, I, let's say maybe make it to 60 because I think okay. that's where it's really yeah. going to come in. But yes, I, I understand yeah. the sentiment there. But I, I sit here and I go, what went into that statistic? Because I have seen lots of examples where statistics are actually misleading or incomplete in that they seem to be projecting something that is not actually solid if you dig deep into it. And that can happen in a number of ways. Like statistics can be manipulated or not manipulated statistics can be faulty in like different ways a few different ways like they can be faulty in a how the data was gathered to produce that statistic so the collection of the data it could be in b how that data is parsed up or analyzed yeah what tools you use to analyze the data that you've gathered or it could be c in how you choose to present that data. Yeah. And all of those things can make it say something like different than maybe it seems. Yeah. So like a classic example of this is, have you heard of the Colgate? You know, the Colgate statistic? Is this like one in every nine? Okay. So there, there was a statistic. Yeah. So there was a statistic that Colgate put in one of their ad campaigns. I don't know when this was, but it said more than 
more than 80% of dentists recommend Colgate. That's what they said, and they put it out. So, more than 80% of dentists recommend Colgate. Okay, so so I this is the first time you're just bringing this up, but I guess I'll try and go through your thing. So the first thing is, how many dentists and what dentists were we talking to to gain this, right? Did we sit down and talk to 10 dentists or did we talk to 10,000 dentists? How were the dentists selected? That's the first question. Yeah. The second, yeah, how were they selected? And then also I would say, what does recommend mean? Because sure, you could say, oh, recommend implies some kind of comparison, right? Are you recommending it over all other kinds of toothpaste or are you recommending it over not using toothpaste? Right. Because that's a big difference. Right. Okay. So yeah. talk so, to me about what actually so presumably basically came they, I think, came under fire for this in a sense, or people kind of debunked this in a sense because they looked into it and they realized that what actually happened was dentists in this study they did mm -hmm. were given a series of options of toothpaste to select that they recommended and Colgate was one of several. So Oh, so, so they, they could have checked one the of, box of Right. So Colgate was one of several toothpaste that doctors pre suggested that so, 80% suggested. So putting it wait, so putting it into words, it's really that 80 whatever percent of dentists approve of the use of Colgate. Sure. Putting but, it, trying to put it more into plain right. English. So they could have selected five toothpaste and said, I recommend these five. Sure. And that person counts as a dentist who recommends Colgate. Sure. But the way that they phrased it or the way they presented this data mm -hmm. made you think on initial read. That it was recommended person over everything else. Makes it think that 80% of dentists are recommending that as like the primary good best brand. But sure. that is not what the, that's not how the data was collected. Well, the other thing so, that you could say is 15% or let's just say 15%. 15% of dentists think that you shouldn't use Colgate. Right. Right. Because presumably they didn't check to recommend <laughs> right. it. Right. Right. Like that, <laughs> that reads totally different when you flip it. Right. Yeah. So I feel like that's an example of how in how you present or communicate out your data mm -hmm. that can alter the perception of it. And that, that, that means a very different thing than what the original statistic would make you think. Like I that's think, something to consider. I think sometimes it's more straightforward, like X percent of marriages end in divorce, X percent of second marriages end right. in divorce. Right. Some things are more, more easily able to be kind of cut and dry. And, and in but, the Colgate example, right, we're not applying it to an individualized case. We're not trying to understand whether or not one dentist recommends Colgate. We're trying to understand whether or not a patient should use Colgate. Right. Right. So it's more of a group. This is what I was talking about before, where most of my examples I'm talking about applying a statistic to an individualized case. And I think what you're talking about here is applying a statistic to a group. Right. So maybe it's probably a little bit flip side of what you were talking before, but I think it, it follows the same type of theme of how statistics can be maybe misinterpreted. Yeah, or, or misleading. Or not, yeah, misleading or not properly analyzed how they should be. So like sure. I think the other difference There's a lot that goes into it. I think the other difference is in your case or with the Colgate thing. You know, and and maybe someone would disagree with me, but it seems like a somewhat nefarious example where you're trying to doctor a response versus in the divorce rate whatever. I don't think that most of the time people are attempting to doctor a response. I think it's just that number is out there. Yeah. Or, okay, so here's here's another example. You've heard the um, 
the story with the World War Two planes, right? Oh, that yeah. Came... So, uh, the fundamental lesson um, or understanding is of survivorship bias. Right. So in that instance, what it was was these, you know, World War Two, these planes in World War Two, mm-hmm. they kept coming back. Was it the British Army? I don't know. Kept losing all these planes. Mm-hmm. And uh, to, you know, they kept getting shot down. Yeah. And so they started taking a look at all the planes that that they had gotten that weren't shot down. Yeah, that they had start come analyzing back And they where start they analyzing where are they getting shot. And they kind of map it out where the most likely places are getting shot. Mm-hmm. And so they start reinforcing those areas because, well, those, the are those areas are getting shot a lot. So we need to mm-hmm. reinforce those areas. Yeah. But that did not solve their problem. Well, it actually did the opposite. Yeah. More planes got shot down. Be- well, did it? I don't know about that. Yeah, they did. Okay. Because the problem was they did not consider the fact that all the planes that they were checking where the bullet holes were, were planes that had not gotten shot down. Yeah, they made it so back So they least. survived getting shot in those places. And actually the places that needed reinforcing were, were the, the places opposite, where that those that weren't didn't shot. have sh- bullet holes in them. Yeah. Because... The planes that had got shot there did not come back. <laughs> yeah. So there was a bias in the sample size that they were picking. You could also think about if you're doing some kind of maybe self-reported study about introversion versus extroversion. Yeah, introversion Let's versus say. extroversion, or pers- personalities, or I don't know something along those yeah, lines. Personality of some kind. You yeah. should consider maybe a bias in your population of who's signing up. Who is more likely to. Or maybe you're conducting your study in person, in a focus group where you're in a room with, you know, 10, 15 people about introversion and extroversion. Well, who's more likely to be willing to sign up and spend three hours on a Saturday afternoon in a room with 15 strangers talking to them? Probably not an introvert. Yeah, yeah. So you have Uh, a bias in your sample size there. Yeah. Right. Or not your sample size. You have a bias in your population that you're pulling data from. In your sample population, yeah. And that makes a big difference. 